Hey, what's up, guys? Chris Lee back with another video today. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to start a home studio on budget. Now, the first thing that you guys are going to need to start your home studio is a good computer, whether that be a Mac computer or a desktop computer or just any type of laptop that you want to use. Now, based off uh, price and me making this video off budget, then I'm going to recommend you take the budget route first before I start recommending anything that's more expensive in a process. OK, so let's talk about budget computers. When you talk about a budget computer, I recommend you guys get a desktop computer or a laptop uh, that's going to have at least eight gigabytes of memory and 500 gigabyte hard drive space. That way you're able to process a lot of the plugins or different applications that you're going to be using while recording. Now, I also recommend you guys get an external hard drive just because uh, the external hard drive is going to be purposely uh, used for storing a lot of your plugins as well as your sessions on external hard drive and the reason why you want to do this is because you don't want to take up the space that's going to be on your actual computer anything to make your computer run fast and smooth while recording that's what you want to go for it doesn't require you guys to go out and buy a 2700 mac, mac computer or some expensive computer uh, it's just all about how you manage your computer's space and memory. Try to find a computer that has a SSD hard drive. That's a solid state hard drive. Your read and write time is going to be a lot faster on those computers, and that's your best bet. The next thing that you guys are going to need to be able to record is you want to get a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone can range anywhere from all the way from $50 all the way up to $5,000 plus. It all depends on what you're looking for and how you're trying to spend your money. So you want to make sure that you find a condenser microphone that you're able to afford. If it was me personally, my first microphone was the Audio-Technica 2020. Uh, I used that microphone for years. I got great recordings out of it, and I love the microphone. Now that I do audio engineering and music professionally, and I have been for 10 plus years, I've advanced and I've upgraded to Neumann microphones and more expensive company microphones like that. Uh, I recommend that you find a microphone that's not too muffled. Pay attention to something called the frequency response. The frequency response will let you know uh, the range of the microphone, how well it's going to perform in the mids, the high frequencies, and the lows. Uh, that's something that you really want to focus on. If you find a microphone uh, for 100 bucks or 150 bucks, and the frequency response is right, then stick with that one. The next thing that you want to focus on getting is a mic stand. You're going to need something to actually hold your microphone up. Now, make sure you go ahead and pick up an XLR cable. The XLR cable connects from the microphone to the audio interface that's going to help you get your audio signal from the interface to the computer. Now, let's talk about the audio interface. The audio interface is probably the key component in a whole recording process. This is going to take your audio signal and it's going to boost it even louder. It's going to take that audio signal that you have that's analog and it's going to actually convert it to a digital signal that the computer can process uh, for your recordings. So you want to make sure that you go out and find an affordable interface. There are two channel interfaces, there's four channel interfaces, uh, and there's even some interfaces out there that have uh, 16 channel uh, preamps within them. I recommend getting a two channel interface just because it's just you recording by yourself. Uh, and also if you play a particular instrument, it'll give you the option to go ahead and plug in either an electric guitar or whatever the case may be, acoustic guitar, whatever instrument that you may have, it's gonna allow you to connect that to the audio interface while you're recording vocals at the same time. So if you're looking for an audio interface, try to find an interface within the range between $100 and $250. I wouldn't recommend spending any more money than that just because you haven't really learned the process of recording, so you don't need to start off with anything that's too expensive. Next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is headphones. Now, there are a wide range and a variety of headphones out there. What I do recommend that you get is you get flat response headphones, and this is going to be the same thing that applies to the concept of the studio monitors, but I'll get to that later. You want to find some studio headphones that are flat response, which means they're not going to enhance the highs or the mids, or they're not going to boost the highs or the mids or the lows uh, for you. They're going to give you an accurate flat response of whatever your mix sounds like in the box is going to sound the same exact way when you reference them on the headphones. So there's plenty of companies out there. Uh, what I've used for years was Audio-Technica headphones. I use Shure headphones, and I also love KRK 6400 uh, 
headphones. They were great headphones for me. They were really inexpensive. They got the job done. Uh, a lot of the headphones that I purchased were flat response. So anything that I was listening to inside of my mix while I was mixing and recording, it sounded the same way when I referenced them on my headphones as well as in a car or somebody else's uh, studio system. So you want to make sure that you get some headphones that are really affordable. I know you guys love to use the Beats by Dre's, but I recommend not to use the Beats by Dre's while recording just because those headphones, they're amplified and they're boosted in a lot of the mids and the low range. And you don't want to be using headphones that are going to give you an inaccurate um, uh, sound of what your actual mix sounds like in a box. The next piece, studio monitors. Studio monitors are key and important to your recording process while trying to start a home studio. My recommendation when it comes to studio monitors is to find studio monitors that also have a flat response, the same concept with the headphones. You want to be able to find a studio monitor that's going to be flat, that's going to be true to the sound. So for my recommendations, for years, I've used KRK. When I started doing music, I used KRK. And here I am 10 plus years later working for the music industry as well as audio, recording my own songs, mixing for clients. KRK is still my go-to brand. For a good pair of studio monitors, you can, you're going to pay about 300 bucks. Um, that's on budget. You can get a nice pair of KRK studio monitors for about 300 bucks. But there are other studio monitors out there that are a little cheaper and more affordable, but it all depends on your needs and your budget. If you can afford more expensive things in the process, then go ahead and pay for more expensive things. But the whole concept of this video is to help you guys learn how to budget. Now, let's talk about the most important piece, your recording DAW. What kind of program are you gonna be recording in? DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. That's pretty much going to be the software that you're going to use to be able to record your vocals inside of as well as mix your vocals. Now, there's a lot of industry standard programs out there such as Pro Tools, uh, Ableton Live, different programs like that. We all know that Pro Tools can be pretty expensive as well as some of the other softwares, but that's because it's industry standard. It's used at almost every professional studio facility across the world, and it's just one of those powerful programs that you can do a lot of things in. Now... It's very user friendly and that's what I like about it. Now, if you want to go on budget, then I will recommend everybody out there to get FL Studio. And the reason being is because FL Studio is probably a hundred dollars to two hundred dollar program. But the thing about it is it's one powerful software. You'll be able to record vocals, you'll be able to make beats inside of the software, as well as mix when you can afford more programs or more expensive programs than I, I suggest you guys invest in things like Pro Tools, uh, Nuendo, Cubase, Ableton Live. There's a lot of different programs. If you are a Mac user, then I recommend you guys use Logic Pro X. The reason being is because you won't have to invest in the money in Pro Tools or any other software. It's a $200 program that comes uh, with your that you can purchase for you with your MacBook Pro. You can either purchase it with it or uh, you can purchase it after it. But Logic Pro X is a powerful software that you can record vocals in, make beats in, and you can also do sound design for videos whenever you, if you're somebody who's into film and things like that. Logic Pro has been one of my go-to softwares as well as Pro Tools and FL Studio all at the same time just because I use them for different things and I believe personally that they just all give me a different sound. I kind of feel like when I want to do more of my sound design type things uh, then Logic Pro seems to be the software for me or if I want to make softer beats. If I want to make club bangers or trap beats and things like that, then I stick with FL Studio. When I want to combine and mix and do all these different things, then I use Pro Tools because ultimately at the end of the day, I end up bouncing everything out of FL Studio, Logic or whatever software I'm using into Pro Tools because that's the most powerful software that I use to mix music. One thing that I do recommend you guys to do is to look for a package deal. There are package deals that come with a condenser microphone, an audio interface, headphones, and some studio monitors out there. Look on Z Zounds, look on Guitar Center, look on Sweetwater, Google it. Uh, if you guys need me to help you put some of these package deals together, then I can help you. The biggest benefit about these package deals is it allows you to save money 
while getting everything in a bundle kit. So like I said, individually, you might go out and pay $150 for a microphone, another $200 to $250 for an interface, another $300 uh, for some studio monitors, and probably another $100 to $200 uh, for your studio headphones. That's a lot of money. That would probably equal somewhere to around $1,000. There are websites out there that actually have bundle deals or package deals that you can get an interface, studio monitors, headphones, and a condenser mic for under $500. I think that that'll be your best bet just because it's affordable. It has everything that you need in one kit. It might not be your ideal microphone or it might not be your ideal preamp or, or your interface or headphones or whatever the case may be. But the goal for you guys that are just beginning or getting started is to find you a kit to learn how to start recording any software is learning how to use a condenser mic or use an audio interface or use studio monitors. These things are all important before you start upgrading. I recommend you guys not spending any money on hardware gear as well as plugins for right now if you're just getting started. Just because every software that you're going to buy, whether it be Pro Tools, um, uh, Studio One, whether it be Logic, whether it be FL Studio, Nuendo, Cubase, whatever recording DAW you buy, they're already going to come uh, with a lot of their factory plugins already. So I recommend that you learn how to use the EQs, compressors, and reverbs, and flangers, and delays that are in the software as is for right now until you get really good with them and then go out and spend some money on some hardware gear if you continue or decide that you want to continue to do music or mixing music or whatever the case may be. I would hate for you guys to go out and spend a lot of money on a lot of gear that you know nothing about. The best way to do it is to learn how to use it effectively and then go out and start purchasing more and upgrading and buying more expensive things if you like. Yeah, you can go out and buy a $5,000 microphone, but you'll be surprised that if you go out and buy a $5,000 microphone, it might not sound as good as you think it's going to sound because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to use it uh, with the gear that you got, or you don't know, or you don't have components inside of your, uh, your preamp or your interface that can actually push that mic to its full capabilities. So therefore, if you got a $5,000 mic and a hundred dollar preamp or you know, a um, hundred dollar interface, then it's a good chance that you're not going to get $5,000 worth of quality out of that microphone. Don't be afraid to buy used gear. There's used gear everywhere. Uh, Guitar Center is very uh, known for having used gear and selling used gear. And the thing about it is the gear is actually in great condition. A lot of it is in excellent condition, good condition. They're very honest about their gear and what condition it's in. Now, the reason, the biggest benefit of buying used gear is that if you just want to try something out, say a new microphone or a new interface, instead of going out and paying a whole bunch of money for it that you probably can't afford, then go ahead and buy the used piece of gear and try it out and see how you like it. And then if you want to go ahead and upgrade or buy your own brand new, then you're capable of doing that. There's a whole bunch of websites out there, Craigslist, OfferUp, uh, eBay, a lot of these websites, people are selling used gear and the gear is in great condition. It's in great shape. And even if it's not, it's something for you to get started. It's something for you to learn how to record. So don't hesitate. I have bought gear for years and years and years, 10 plus years of my life. And a, a lot of my stuff either have been used at one point or it was something that I bought to use for the time being, whether it was for a project for a client that I really needed it for, whatever the case may be. I made that sacrifice to invest in that uh, to get ultimately paid and make my cl client happy at the end of the day. I wasn't afraid to make that investment. It was very necessary. A lot of that stuff that I bought used, I still have to this day and it works great. I use it in my setup right now. There are tons of people who are changing careers or or changing hobbies or whatever the case may be. They don't wanna do music anymore, so they're getting rid of these microphones and these uh, studio monitors or their entire audio setup. If you find somebody who's selling studio monitors, headphones, interfaces, microphones, everything all together in one, try to purchase that kit just because it's going to help you save money in the long run and it's going to allow you to get your feet wet while trying to record your own vocals. Now, if you guys need any type of mixing and mastering for your actual songs after viewing this video, 
contact me. I'll put my link in the description box uh, for my website so you can check out my quality. Um, at the same time, uh, if you guys need any type of advice on mixing or how to start recording this out of these programs, I'm gonna be uploading tons of videos, but make sure that you check out my channel because my channel has a tons of videos that teaches you about EQs, compression, recording vocals, recording r and vocals, rap vocals, you name it. My channel has a lot of information on that. Guys, please subscribe to this video. You guys can expect tons of tutorials, tons of information on how to start um, audio recording studios or filmmaking or, or camera gear, whatever the case may be. I have a lot of information. I'm very knowledgeable on a lot of these things and I wanna help you guys out. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button right now. Subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for more videos and I hope this was helpful to you guys. Peace.